your dangerous obsession with cause and effect. How often have you seen a news story that goes something like this? Following the President's foreign policy statement, global markets fell by several points, suggesting a lack of confidence in the proposed strategy. I've seen about a dozen like this in the last week alone. In fact, it's so ordinary to encounter an analysis like this that it can be difficult to see that actually something pretty significant is being claimed. See, first, one thing has happened. The President made a foreign policy statement. Then another thing has happened. Global markets fell. So now in conclusion, we're asked to accept that this second thing happened as a direct result of the first thing. Now, is this likely? Well, in many cases, no. Thousands of events happen in any day that can affect stock markets in all kinds of ways, including the movements of those same markets which affect themselves. It's pretty complicated. And often, a news story like the one I've just made up will be followed a few hours later by an eerily similar story drawing precisely the opposite conclusion. After an initial fall in global markets, it will say, they rallied towards the end of the day, suggesting underlying faith in the President's strategy and firmness. Exactly the opposite meaning exactly the same day. So once you've decided one thing is directly causing another, you don't need to let facts or consistently get in your way. As long as there's a nice consistent story to be told, who cares? Researchers often use the phrase, correlation is not causation to describe this problem. Two things are correlated if they follow each other closely, if one happens after the other or they follow each other very closely. So, for example, the world's population has increased steadily over the last half century, and so has the number of people playing video games. But I doubt there is a direct causal relationship between these two things. This may seem obvious, but spurious correlations are both easy to generate in the digital age and dangerously persuasive. Where computers search through thousands of pieces of data, or people can search millions of web pages and news stories in search of evidence for something, we can end up proving whatever it is we want to prove. One of my favorite spurious correlations is the strong relationship between the number of movies featuring Nicolas Cage from 99 to 2009 and the number of Americans who drowned falling into swimming pools. Tyler Vegan's website Spurious Correlations features this delight and many others, together with graphs that are horribly convincing to a casual browser. And this is a huge part of the problem. You see, when someone presents you with a story about causation, about vaccines causing autism, for example, you only see what they want you to see. You don't see the thousands of other factors and variables and possibilities that they have deliberately excluded. You just see the story. If I say to you, the two brothers died within hours of each other, well, you will assume that these events are related because why else would I be bothering to tell you this story? And yet it's quite possible that unrelated accidents on opposite sides of the world claim these lives, that I'm just picking out a persuasive pattern which reality itself doesn't support. In other words, genuinely demonstrating causation is very difficult, cautious work. It's something that involves actively pushing back against our natural prejudices. Because almost all of the time, causes are more complex than we think, and correlations are more common. Don't let a good story fool you.